It's important that we know God. Because when we have expectations for him or beliefs that are not that do not coincide with who he is, then what we have done is create an idol to worship because it's not the true and living God. So as we come to know all of these aspects of his personality, then we know in whom we have believed. And we know who the true God is that we serve. And because we know who he is, then we can know who we are through him. God in his omniscience knew that his creation would sin and would face eternal separation from him. Before before creation, God in his mercy determined that he would send his son to the earth to live as our example, and to be a perfect sacrifice so that we could all be rightly related to God. So that the perfect sacrifice of Christ would take, Christ would take on all of our sin, and our sin would be forgiven. And we would have the opportunity to confess Christ as our Savior and be rightly related to God. Sometimes we think of God as judgmental and wanting to punish us. And we forget that it was his mercy that caused him to send his son to die for us. Because he knew we couldn't do it on our own. In the parable of the prodigal son, which we read together with Maureen and Bonnie, We're looking at a beautiful picture of God's mercy. What does the prodigal son parable mean? There are many different interpretations. And maybe when you read it again tomorrow or next year, or whenever it is, you may see it entirely different from what you're seeing it today or what I'm presenting. God's word is truth. His truth endures forever. And he teaches us things in layers as we can receive what he has to say. And so this is what I saw when I was reading this scripture. Many believe that the parable of the prodigal son could also be called the wasteful son and has three messages and others say, no, it only has one. And of course, as many people as read it, there will be discussion, and maybe different understandings. Luke 15, 11 through 19, again, I want to read. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And so he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Here we see a younger son in the family. I don't know what the family's name was, but he was part of the family. And he wanted to go away and do his own thing. And that reminds me of those of us, all of us, who are in the family of God. And we are living and breathing and doing what we do as part of God's family. And maybe we even ask God for 
deliverance from health issues or prosperity or relationship issues. And God gives us the answer to those prayers because he loves us, because we're his children. And then, as human beings, we'll say, and maybe not outright, but we do this by our actions, we'll say, thank you, God, I'll take it from here. And I will go on my own and do what it is I want. We're still part of the family. The son was still the son of the father. Still a member of the family, but not appreciating or receiving the benefits of living in the family. He had decided to go off on his own, to make his own choices, to do what he wanted. And so he came into really hard times. He made choices that did not benefit him as a person or as a member of his family. And he became impoverished. He became hungry. He felt guilty. And he felt a need to return. When we decide to walk off on our own and say, God, I got it. I'll take care of it. We become impoverished of spirit because we are not benefiting from being in a close relationship with the family of God. We are not benefiting from staying in a close relationship with God. Are we still part of his family? Yes, but we're not getting the benefits. Our spirit becomes impoverished. We may be suffering physical consequences because of the choices we make. And we feel, oh, so guilty because of what we've done that we know would not be pleasing to God. So God, being merciful with his Holy Spirit, draws us back. And we, being human, feel guilty and think, oh, well, maybe I'll just crawl back in under the door and sit in the pew and, and I'll, I'll start reading my Bible, but, but I won't be having fellowship with the other people in the congregation uh, because I don't deserve to be part of it because of the choices I've made. So we come back, whether it's to God personally and, and talk to him about what we've done wrong and ask for forgiveness and, and try to reestablish our, ourselves in his kingdom. Now, God has not gone anywhere. God is there. But we, being wayward and wanting to take what we have and go off on our own and make our own decisions, we stop acknowledging that God is there. And we stop listening. We stop reading the word. We stop fellowshipping. When we realize that that does not bring happiness, we want to return to the fold. We want to return to God. And just as the prodigal son came back and he said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. You know who tells us that we are no longer worthy to be children of God? That message comes from Satan. Because we didn't get to be children of God because we're worthy. We got to be children of God because of God's mercy who sent his son to be the sacrifice so we could accept that perfect sacrifice and be his child. When, when we see where the father's response was when he came back, it was, and he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. 
and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Here we see the lost son returning to the father, desiring only to be a servant, only to just slip back into the family, not have all the benefits of the family, but just to be there. And the father says, no, you don't get to just slip back in and hide and feel guilty. You are my son, and you have returned, and you have asked for forgiveness, and I am so glad that you have returned. And he threw a big party. And we see that it did not matter to the father where the son had been or what he had done or that he had wasted all that had been given to him. What mattered was that he was back. It doesn't matter how many mistakes we've made, and we've all made them, doesn't matter how much of a bad life you've lived before you were a Christian or even those that we've lived after we've become a Christian. What matters is that we repent and we return to the Father who will graciously receive us because all of our sins have already been forgiven. It's what God wants is a relationship with us. He's provided all the benefits. He's provided the way to have relationship. It's up to us to come and to receive that relationship. Now, of course, the end of the parable is, and there have been many sermons about this too, his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called the servant, and he asked what it meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe, and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said, All these many years I've been serving you. I never broke your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours that came back, who has devoured your livelihood, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. The father, the older son, thought the father was unfair because he was celebrating the return of the wayward son. See, what the older son wanted was to be commended because he had been so good. And he was jealous that his brother was received with open arms and with joy. And the father made such a big deal of the return of the son. And, he, and the older son felt that he should have received something too because he stayed. Well, you know what he had? He had fellowship. He had relationship with the father. He had all the benefits of living and staying in the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of the Father, translates to the kingdom of God, because he didn't stray. He didn't walk away and do his own thing. And the celebration was because of the younger son acknowledging that he was wrong and that he needed to be part of the fellowship of the family. The older son is like many of us. Even though he had stayed and enjoyed the benefits of the family and he had lived in the prosperity of the father and had not done anything wrong, sometimes we get self-righteous. I didn't do anything bad. I stayed in the church. I stayed. I read my Bible every day. I pray every day. I, I give to the poor. I do all the things that are required of me. And we get self-righteous. And we start to judge those who don't do all the things that we do. And that's why Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said, There's a gentleman in your congregation that is having an immoral relationship with his stepmother. He has been confronted of this, and he has not repented nor changed his ways. You are to remove
remove him from the fellowship and not have anything to do with him. The reason for that was so he could see what his sin was causing him. Loss of fellowship, loss of relationship. And so he would miss that and he would repent and return to the family of God. And then when he did, Paul told the Corinthian church, you receive him with open arms and you reinstate him to where he was before. The same theory as the, the prodigal son and the father receiving him. We want to judge. We want to punish. We want to make levels of goodness for ourselves when what we are, all of us, are sinners saved by grace. Nothing we have done can, can qualify us for the great things God has done for us in his mercy. Mercy is defined as not getting what you deserve, and it's withheld punishment. Grace is God's unmerited favor. It's kindness from God that we don't deserve. There's nothing that we have ever done or that we can ever do that will gain his favor. I think the point for me today of this sermon is that God rejoices when we realize that we need to walk close to him. We need to stay in fellowship with him. We need to stay in his family and have relationship. We need to be joyful when someone who has walked away and maybe done it their own way and said, I don't really need you or the family, I and back. I need to be in, in fellowship with God where he's placed me. We move forward in our quest for righteous living by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. We cannot save ourselves and we can't even get our own lives in order. The only thing we can do is give in to the will of God and allow the Holy Spirit to transform us. God loves us. And he's so excited and joyful when we repent of the things that keep us separated from him. Just like the father in the parable, he welcomes us with open arms into, back into relationship. If you have walked away from where you know God wants you to be, know that all you need to do is Turn around. Ask God to forgive you and reestablish you back in his family. Ask him to draw you closer. And you know, all those things that separated you from God in your relationship, he knows about all of those. Nothing is hidden from him. And he will use those things to open your eyes and allow you to know how important your relationship is with God. God bless you. Amen.